What's going on coders? Today we're going to talk about updating our projects to the new versions. And I know this is a topic that a lot of programmers, we feel nervous about updating our old projects to the latest versions. And I'm going to show you an example of mine right here. Uh, I have a website right here called coderkai.dev. You can go here and see all of my projects. And uh, one of my projects that I have here is called Strap. And this Strap project was created using Next.js version 14. And so Next.js came out with their new version 15. You know, like a lot of people, I felt nervous about updating it. I thought it's going to be time consuming and all of this stuff. So I'm going to show you my process on how I update this. And uh, you're going to see that it's very easy. I'll step you through it and you don't have to feel nervous about updating your projects. So let's get into this. We're going to start right here with chat GPT. That's right. I'm going to use AI to help me out with this. And don't worry, I'm not going to cheat on this. I'm not going to copy all of my code in here and tell chat GPT convert this to version 15. Uh, that can get really messy if you don't know what you're doing. I'm really using this as a tool to break things down for me. So we're going to ask chat GPT this list all of the functions from next JS version 15 and any deprecated functions from version 14. So yeah, we want to break down everything that has changed from version 14 and anything new in version 15. And look at this right here. Everything that has changed from version 14 to 15 new features. It has uh, React 19 support, Turbo Pack in development, and the stable uh, async request APIs. But the important thing I want to look at is this deprecated part right here, deprecated and removed features from version 14. And uh, this right here, deprecation of use form state. So use form state is used whenever you're creating a contact form or any type of form. And all of us, we're using those forms. So I have to go through, find all of my forms and update this use form state to this new one called use action state now. So that's what's gonna break your program. If you're trying to migrate, you have to update the use form state. Uh, they removed Next.js font right here, package, and they're using a new one. So um, that stuff is only inside of your layout.js. You can look into the Next.js font. And then they removed geo and IP from next request. So if you're using any of those in your libraries, just find the geo and IP and they removed it. Uh, so you see right here, it's not that many, right? It's just a few. And really, this is the most important part that I have to update in my application. Now, if you're wondering uh, why I'm using ChatGPT, I did try Claude and I did try Perplexity as well. Perplexity was hailed as one of the best and it's the top one right now, but I can see Perplexity working for other things, but for my coding, I noticed that ChatGPT is just spot on. It, it's so good at giving me answers to my coding and I tell it to briefly give me you know, bullet points and just, just break it down easily for me. And ChatGPT is just right on it. Uh, Claude got it wrong, Perplexity didn't get it. It did not have this part of it. It didn't show me the deprecation part of it and I asked it the same questions as this right here. So you can give it a try, you can see which one works for you. But for me, ChatGPT worked the best for me with coding. I can see other stuff for like research purposes, maybe Perplexity I think. But coding, it worked the best for me. ChatGPT always came through for me. The next step is uh, here's my old strap, Next.js version 14, I like to label it. And then I have a new Next.js 15 one here. I create a new folder called strap Next.js 15. So I'm going to drag this into my Visual Studio Code right here. And we're going to start fresh from this. So let's install Next.js. npx create next app dot my old version, it didn't use TypeScript, but I'll go with TypeScript as well. Yes, link, yes, Tailwind, yes, uh, source directory, I don't like the source directory, uh, app router, yes, turbo pack, it is no. So, and so the next step is I like to go to my uh, previous version, the version 14, and I'm just going to go to the form that I know that has an issue, which is the contact form. That's the uh, used uh, form state that we need to correct, right? So I'm going to drag this contact into my application here. And I know that my contact uses a component here. I just put the whole component folder in here. Copy folder. So here is our contact form. 
And so you see right here, use form state, and it's also used form status. What I like to do is just comment that out. Right here, we have our form submit that handles everything. But down here, here's the state form action that is doing the use form state. I need to convert this now. So we're going to comment that out. And also the use form status is no longer using that. So now let's import use action state right here from React. That's the new one we want to use. And uh, it's going to say right here, const state. Sorry for this stuff popping up. I have Copilot installed and it's giving me suggestions on it. But we're going to step through this. There's a state. Uh, we have our form action right here. So we're going to still use that form action. And then now this thing has a pending, which is calling is pending. Equals use action state. And then we're going to call our form submit, right? Then we have our message that we uh, need to set to default. That's our default message there. Let's step through this use action state, what it's doing. Uh, we're still saying our state, which we're returning as a message right here. We have a default message and we're using the state down here so that we can display our message after the form has been submitted, right? This is going to capture the return value for the state. Uh, this right here is the dispatch. So uh, use form action, it's calling this dispatch. And it's really the form action right here. The dispatch is what you're calling it here. I'm calling it form action. If I change this to dispatch, like that, right? Then I just call this dispatch. So that's how it works. But I like to call things what it's doing. And this is an action on it. So I, I call it form action. That's all I'm doing. So this accepts that, and then it's also returning us a pending. So it's allowing us to remove this now, the use form status. We don't have to include the use form status anymore. It's returning that for us. It's going to handle it for us. And then it's using the use action state, and it's allowing us to call our function here now, which is I have a form submit. So then it does the form submit, and my form submit returns the result after it sends the message. And then uh, this just sets the default message as it's being initialized. So it's very easy now. We don't have to use these two things here. And we just use one use action state. And so now our form works exactly how it should, the same way. Uh, to convert this to TypeScript, you just go up to your form submit here and you just have to tell it what these are. And uh, this is a, you can give it a property right here, you know, the previous state prop. And you can set that as a type type you know it's, it's giving me this already uh, because uh, copilot is very useful I, I really suggest you put in copilot it knows how you're setting things up and it, it looked through this and it, it sees that you have the state already and it knows that you're returning a message so it's telling it all right let's give it a, a prop of message string and then for the form data this is a prop of form data because that's built in already uh, next.js has this form data already so we're just returning here we're using it see how we're doing the form data get, uh, get email message those are the only two things that I'm using in this form. I'm asking for an email and then to send a message. And then down here, you see that we're using the pending too. The button gets disabled as we submit this form and uh, is using this pending right here when it sets it to true or false. So that's all we have to update to get this new form to work. Uh, of course, it's, not, it's showing red right here because we're in um, just regular JavaScript. And then you convert this to TSX. Then that'll be your TypeScript file. So that's how you do it. Let's put this back. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to use AI to find out what you need to fix in your code. And then you go directly to the areas that you need to fix. So uh, now I know that all of my form actions here, it doesn't affect these files here. Nothing in here, I'm using form actions. So everything is good. It's only my contact form. So, so that's done right here. My contact form is done. And if I'm confident about my other files here, I can just drag in the rest of the stuff, put it in, and I do my npm run dev, test it out, then I npm run build, everything looks good, and I'm finished. You know, that's how easy it is to migrate. So don't feel uh, discouraged from migrating your project. I use AI to just make it so much easier. 
you know, you can go to the Next.js website to read up all, on all of this, but look how fast it just, you know, gave me everything that changed. And then I just looked through these functions, but there weren't a lot of changes in Next.js 15. They, they really like, they added Turbo Pack, they made things faster, better, they're using uh, React 19 support. And it was really this part right here that broke my program. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, that's, that's very simple. And uh, like I said, I went to Claude here and I asked it the same question. I'm gonna show you what it shows right here. And I'm gonna copy the same here. And then let's ask Claude this right here. And I, I just didn't like the way they, uh, they gave me back all of this and stuff here. Like I didn't get what I needed. So you see right here, look, deprecated functions from version 14. Uh, image, next image layout, deprecation, next navigation, router push, get static props. Like, where's the uh, form function? Where is my use form? And that was what really changed. So if I use this here and I updated my code, it would have broke it. And yeah, Claude didn't give me this answer and neither did perplexity. So like, I was just kind of disappointed with these two because I read so many articles that perplexity and all this was just so great. And I, and I just went back to chat GBT and I just got it down on the first try. It was just so easy and simple. So, so there you go. It's up to you guys on what AI that you like to use. I use it for uh, fixing all my code. And as programmers, I think chat GPT does it very good with code issues. Now, if I'm doing research papers, maybe I'll use perplexity. I hear that is good on research and uh, yeah, that's, that's the differences. So uh, I hope that helped you guys in, you know, giving you more confidence to update your code. And if you want to view all of my projects here, just go to kodakai.dev. I just created this website to make it easy for you guys to see all of my projects. And I'm going to use this to uh, just showcase all my projects. It has demos on it, you know, photos. Uh, you can go to the GitHub. You want to grab this code here. It just goes directly to it. You can just git clone it. And then uh, in a future video, I'm going to release my strap project here that I created and I'll give the uh, GitHub code to it. This thing has everything. It uses Stripe and it has authentication and it has file downloading, it has everything on it, dashboard, all this stuff. And I plan on doing a whole tutorial on how I created this thing with the Stripe and everything. Like, look at this, you know, I have like subscription models and you can just create this using Stripe, charge people. Everything is simple. It's all directly on your website. But I am hosting this on Vercel right now so that uh, you can see it as a demo. But uh, go ahead and go to my website here. I just created this dev website. You can see all my projects. And I plan on doing this as a new tutorial in the future. So go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel. And you see all my stuff coming up. Also, if you go to my tech page here, you'll see all of the stuff on my desk setup. If you like this stuff, go ahead and view it. And I give you photos and links to them. Very easy. Go ahead and go through it and purchase what you like. Here's my new Raspberry Pi 5 setup that I did. All the links and everything on how I did it. And I show you the desktop that I use on it too, the KDE Plasma. Get all the info on that. There you go, very simple. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you subscribe to it and like. I'll see you in the next one. Kodakai out.